people deluded i'm back again appreciative to my long-term supporters for tuning in and big up you yourselves if you're new here the grind don't stop so how can i people now as we approach july arsenal have officially signed someone an under 18s goalie but where the transfer rumors are concerned they're still alive and kicking people again 99.9 percent .9%, i'm sure you do a lot would agree of all of these rumors are bs but it makes for great talking points people and we've got to get the content somehow so if you give me a second i'll share my screen and we'll go over what is in the tabloids today people now ricardo california of bologna he did very well um in Serie A last season they qualified for the champions league if his reputation couldn't be enhanced because of those exploits where he was a key player in a great collective season his stocks have risen since he's obviously you know performed very well for italy as they look to retain their european championship title having won it last time now i'm actually waiting on youtube to run its checks i've done a tactical analysis of him he's a player i'd love at the carpet proper competition slash a deputy slash could take his place if form permits in in terms of the left center back role left back he can do that as well even though i think his future lies as a center half um apparently before the tournament he was available for 25 to 30 million pounds obviously with the number of clubs not just arsenal that have been linked with him and what he's doing in the you know in the european championships and he, him being in his early 20s his price tag is only going to shoot up now we have shopped in italy before where you look at kirio and tomiyasu i'm sure Jorginho can act like a secret agent and obviously you know turn his head he's linked with everybody fabrizio romano has said after initial plan to keep ricardo califori bologna now feel that it will be almost impossible so they reckon his head will be turned they anticipate big proposals for him soon juventus have players green light since may but still no agreement with bologna now you are seeing a lot of italians starting to venture out of the italian division but it does seem like you know they end up at the acs the inters you know the Juventus is a number of Premier League clubs are keen apparently Spurs Arsenal I know Spurs Spurs Arsenal Liverpool Manchester City allegedly have registered an interest amongst others now being interested doesn't necessarily mean bids and personal terms and things of that ilk but there you have it in it and that's from Fabrizio Romano apparently Real Madrid have joined the fray so again you know boy it makes it very interesting where his future is concerned now we've always been linked with Osman Diamande the 20 year old since he signed for Sport in Lisbon apparently Bayern Arsenal and Chelsea are tracking him now tracking him could just mean we're keeping an updated file on the individual he's going to cost a lot of money and I don't anticipate Arsenal to do such but nonetheless we have been linked with him people keeping up the theme with defenders Fabrizio Romano has spoken on Jakub Kirio he has said Kirio has been linked with a possible exit from Arsenal again however it's not something concrete or close so far AC Milan Juventus and Napoli all appreciate Kirio they know him well since he was at Spezia but that's it at the moment now for Kirio he's got a decision to make especially if we sign if reports are to be believed the left-sided defender whether that's someone that can play as an organic left back or a left-sided center half or is versatile enough to play both of those I do think you know Kirio is behind Zinchenko in the pecking order I do think he's behind Timber and Tomiyasu if you do bring in another one where does that leave him and I wouldn't force Kirio out I think we need a body you know I think we need a good squad play in which Kirio's done that but in terms of first team football it, it you know you can't even guarantee if you go Juventus Napoli or AC Milan you'll get regular football but it does seem like an impossible task he did do well and took advantage of players being injured and had a good run of form at a point last season I do think you know his only glaring obvious get bad games is you know he weren't bad against PSV he just got skinned against Bakayoko I do think he had a good game against Manchester City away but Bernardo Silva turned him and fans are all up in arms and he effed up against Bayern Munich but mistakes happen and I'm, I'm sure he loves being at the club obviously when you take the step up or make the step up it's difficult but minutes are currency and I wouldn't blame him if he is frustrated I don't think he's someone quite with the Tavares is the Lokongas Tierney's injury puts a spanner in the work but the Tierney's potentially Eddie Nketiah and Reese Nelson and Emil Smith Rowe in that the club probably and Ramsdale in that the club probably expect to move on but I do think he's with the Thomas Partey's the Zinchenko's the you know early summer rumours, Gabriel Jesus, players that won't be forced out the door. But if, if proposals are put forward, which are quote unquote hard to turn down, I think Arsenal will study offers. And if we were to get Califori, for example, who for me is an upgrade on him, um, and you were to sell Kirill, who since he's ba basically signed for Arsenal, he's still been linked with these Italian clubs, and you get a decent fee, a decent profit on what we initially spent, then I'm all for it, man. But I wouldn't sanction his exit until another body comes in. And he's one of the last players we need to move on, in, in my opinion. But nonetheless, he's been linked with clubs, but crucially, no offers have been put forward. 
Arsenal have been linked with Conde. Apparently, I covered this before, but Arsenal have contacted Barcelona for Jules Conde. They want to sign him for next season. I mean, Mikel Arteta, again, if he thinks that we need him, fair play. You know, Mikel Arteta is the man, the manager. He knows football a bit more than us. For me, I think it goes against reports. Now, reports on what's actually going on in the world of football are different things, but we hear a left-sided centre-half or a left-sided defender. What sense, beyond obviously Conde being a very good player, does it make really and truly? Because on one hand, I would love fantastic centre-half options, you know, to have the option of Benjamin White centre-half. Never want to see it, but if worse comes to worse, Declan Rice, obviously Kiri or Gabriel Saliba, Timber, Tomiyasu, that's strong depth. Um, and in particular, you know, he, him in Conde and his fellow Frenchman Saliba, as well as Ga Gabriel, three good deputies fighting for that position. It'd be a competitive squad. And he can also play right back. Now, apparently he's accepted that he will play right back for Barcelona. And obviously he's done quite well there for France. But apparently he wants to be a centre-half. Now, where you look at Saliba and Gabriel, um, Saliba and Gabriel, apologies, Saliba and Benjamin White, two of our best players, we know if anything happens to them, we are in trouble. And we've probably not been allowed to arrest them. Obviously, you know, God forbid, but if Saliba's injured, Benjamin White has to move over to right back the dynamic shift and injuries typically come in twos, you know, on with that example, we could get away with it. But just imagine Tommy Asu is injured and obviously, and obviously Benjamin White, Benjamin White has to go centre half and there's something wrong with Timber. We're in issues there. I do think on the face of it, we've got strong defensive depth, but do we really, when I look at it in, in that kind of realm? For me, wouldn't say no if that's what Arteta wants to do, but I don't see why we would do that. I think we'd have to pay a premium. And again, pay the money it's not mine and if he makes a difference great but you would imagine if we were going to spend i don't know what they're asking for but you'd imagine this is 60 plus million quid or something like that surely it's worth not saying you can't get it for cheaper but significantly investing in central midfield for that long-term partner for Declan Rice, whether that's a six to allow Rice to keep being the eight or an eight to, for Rice to go back to the six or two multifunctional players that are able to do both or a wide man. We've been linked with plenty of wingers. If we don't, or a striker, if we don't get a winger and a striker or a striker, I think we're in trouble. You know, I would have loved a striker and a winger, as I've just said. I was prepared to say, you know what, we'll deal with wide options if we get a forward. I don't think it's the end of the world if you get a wide man that can bring goals and we don't necessarily sign a striker. I do think it will be suicidal if we sign neither people and we're setting ourselves up ultimately to fail, which kind of makes no sense because we got 91 Premier League goals when you consider all comps over 100. And, you know, the last two seasons that have just gone, we know we'll score goals. We always do. But it's mad because we know we'll score goals. But who? But Kyle Saka is the only one because he's done it for the last few years. It wouldn't surprise me if Martinelli, Trossard, you know, Declan Rice had a good goal scoring season. Gabriel Jesus has had two conflicting periods. Trossard, if I haven't said him, Kai Havertz has found his touch. Odegaard's got a handsome return. This season has just gone, you know, not as quiet as the year before. So we have the capacity to score goals all over the pitch in across all fragments. But who is going to get the goals? These are questions that somewhat need to be answered, really. And I think there's a lot of volatility there. So I don't really buy the Conde rumours, but let me know your thoughts. Kimmich stuff won't go away. I'm sure we're all looking at this closely. Yesterday, we're, apparently, we was one of the five clubs he's interested in, in joining if he leaves Bayern Munich either this summer or when his contract runs out next summer. The 29-year-old apparently has upset Bayern Munich bosses recently with a, a, a documentary he released. Apparently, you know, it looks bleak as to whether he'll still be at the club after 2025. Manchester City was still interested last summer. Um, if he doesn't get a suitable offer, allegedly, whether that's City, Barcelona, Arsenal, Liverpool, Real Madrid, he's prepared to run down his deal. 29 years of age, last year of his contract, 20 million euros isn't a big fee, but I'd imagine he'd be on handsome wages and 20 odd million. I'm sure the clubs would, you know, clubs that want Kimmich will probably want him to kind of scream and shout and try and force his move away or Bayern Munich saying, do you know what you need to go? Obviously, this is a critical summer, really. And maybe some clubs will say, you know what, quality player will wait a year. You still only be 30. I know once people see 28, 29, they think they need to get a freedom pass and they can't play football anymore. But you get the point. So that's where Kimmich is concerned. Nico Williams on Barcelona in Chester said he'll find out after the Euros. Lamir Yamal consistently says he hopes he joins him at Barcelona. And he also said, I've already said Bilbao is my home. I just renewed 
recently, and I'm very happy here. Apparently, his wage demands could scupper stuff. Apparently, Tottenham Hotspur have registered an interest in Yusuf Fofana, people who I'm sure a lot of us Arsenal fans would like. The 25 year old is into the last year of his contract, and him and the CEO of obviously Monaco have alluded to this is probably the summer to be moved on. I mean, it'd be a good signing for Spurs, but I don't know if you'd do anything of significance, so fair enough. Apparently, Smith Rowe has told Arsenal he wants to quit. Emil Smith Rowe is set to inform Arsenal he wants to leave the club amid interest from Aston Villa, Fulham, and Crystal Palace. It's understood Smith Rowe is keen to depart at the Emirates as he looks for a start in 11 row. Would hope that wasn't the case. He's got two years left on his deal, but it's almost like two wasted years in that he's almost been a forgotten man. And, you know, if we really could get 40 odd million for him, then it kind of is what it is. Maybe going to Aston Villa, where they're going to be in the Champions League, where you're going to play under former manager in Emre, could be something. And he's drawing a lot of interest. Crystal Palace, you know, he's staying. In London, Fulham's obviously a big club as well. Aston Villa are a very forward-thinking club and they've got a good squad. It, I, I don't want to see him leave, but it is what it is, if I'm honest with you people. We do need to raise some funds. Uh, in relation to Onana, apparently PSG have joined the pursuit for the Everton midfielder. He has a 55 million uh, euros price tag on his head and they're still linked with João Neves as well. In fact, Barcelona have also been linked with Onana and Mikel uh, Moreno as well as Kimmich. These are three players that all share similarities in that they play in midfield and they've all been linked with Arsenal people. In relation to João Neves people, again, PSG are interested in signing him. Apparently, Arsenal and United are still in the race, but he's going to cost big money. Personally, I think there's an admiration from Arsenal. I just don't think it's a deal we're going to get done. I covered this yesterday, but apparently Lokonga is moving ever closer to joining Sevilla in, in some capacity. Some rumours say they um, Arsenal want an obligation to buy. Sevilla are saying they want to buy clause. Of course, you want an obligation to buy because it means that he's more or less gone. If they don't take the buy option next summer, then it's another summer where we're having to deal with this case file, people. So we'll have to see what that is. Allegedly, we've been offered a Rafina and Ferran Torres. We've been linked with either player for years. I'm more likely to believe the Rafina ones because David Orns team once said we have interest uh don't see that happening even though i'm not sure if you lot would be for that or against it josh rizertsky who's more so being linked with ac milan juventus and manchester united apparently he's set to decide his future after the euros so obviously arsenal have been linked with him true ram a player from nice that we'd all have taken on a free transfer is also set to join juventus people so another one bites the dust and finally uh, 14 year old Max Dolman will be part of the club's under 18s program at London Coley permanently next season. Arsenal are keen to show the player a pathway to the first team. Now he's 14 and we need to let the man develop. But between him and young Ethan, if they're not in the next five, three, I'm going to say five years, just, just as conservative, obviously sooner rather than later, they will be Arsenal first teamers. He is a very big talent and he's in the right place, you know, and there's a lot Jack Wilshere could teach him people. Um, so yeah, big look for him, people. And, you know, obviously he's 14, the next couple of months to a year or so, you're going to have to get him to sign a scholarship. Obviously you would imagine, even if Arsenal make it abundantly clear, they want to keep him. There'll be a couple of clubs sniffing around um, for him, people. It'd be a shame to lose him for free. I really think he can make Arsenal's first team one day, but again, he's 14. We need to let the man develop in peace and really and truly, we shouldn't even really be knowing about a 14 year old, but it's hard to keep that sort of level of talent, um, under wraps. So with that being said, that's everything there is to consider at this moment in time. If there is any other emerging news or talking points, rest assured videos will come out. Check out the rest of the other content, people. Let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Most importantly, one love for listening. Stay safe, stay blessed. Peace.